Once upon most every morning, I woke up to find a lion there. Today we're going to be looking at John Mayer's Hummingbird, specifically the live version from the As Is Volume 5 CD. I'll put some info in the description about where you can get your hands on that. Let's take a look at some of the parts. It's not as diverse as some of his other tunes. There's really two parts. Uh, the part that's played during the intro, verse, and chorus. And that's uh, hopping between an uh, open A and then it switches to a low E. With only a few minor variations in the picking pattern, which I'll get into. Then we take the pick from the picking position, we stow up between our fingers, and we do a finger style thing for the pre chorus. This is going to be one of the challenges you're going to see, switching on beat from picking on beat and making it sound okay. So I'll show you some exercise to practice that. Let's look at that in detail. Intro measures 1 to 4, feature 2 arpeggiated chord sequences. The first one sounds like this. Measure one, we just repeat that for measure two. And that's the first part. Let's see what we got. We have an open A, we have our pinky on D4, first finger on G1. Those are our those are our three notes. And we pick them like this. So we go through the three notes twice. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then we start it again. We only have time to do two notes before starting all over again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. We play that four times, so two measures. We go through that pattern twice in each measure. And I'm going to suggest a picking pattern to you. I go down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. I'm ending, when I get to the lowest string I'm going to play, I make sure that I play that with an upstroke. Because what it does is, if this is the string and this is the pick, as you go down, down, and then up, the pick is in the air and able to insert and strike that next string. It's great for repeatability and being able to, uh, you know, train your muscle memory to play this stuff. If you're doing all downstrokes, you get... It just doesn't work as well. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. I'll mark that in the tab. And we do that four times over the two measures. And then we go down a string. We take our pinky, put it on the A4. We leave our first finger where it is on G1. And we start on with the open E. And that pattern is a tiny bit different during the parts where Mare is not singing. It sounds like this. explain near the end of this segment. So that picking pattern still uses the down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So you have these double pumped low E's. Let's play those two together at speed and I'll show you how they go into each other. on that A. Why are we doing that? Well, that's really cool. Ending off on the A like that lets us go into the singing part, measure five, with this almost uh, double pumped A thing. Like that. It almost sounds like this. Da, 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 da. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to play the tail end of measure four and go into measure five. Did you hear that? One more time. a really nice little thing that uh, stuck out for me in the track. I really like it. Let's move on to the singing part. First one measures 5 to 12. So the intro part sounds much the same as it did in the intro, except we end it off a tiny bit different. We end on a high note. I'll just demonstrate slow. there. 
there. So near the end of measure six, we're ending on the G1 here. So instead of, usually we end on that D4, but at the very last measure where we're in this A form, we're gonna go. We're going into the low E part. And this low E part, the picking now mirrors what we do for the A. We don't do the double E. Like I said before, that's kind of reserved for parts where he's not singing, but during the verse part, he does this. And I'll leave it up to you. Some people probably don't even play that. And then play this. For the verse, like it's totally up to you. I like the intricacies that he adds, and I like to follow them, but uh, you don't have to. No one will probably even notice. And that's pretty much the verse. Once upon most every morning, I woke up to find a light. Do it all over again. Humming but was making blurs out. Do I bring some purple in the air? And then we kind of stop everything and go into the wacky pre chorus. I was trying to keep her there. Measures 13 to 20, the wacky pre chorus. And this might be a challenge for some because we're going from the picking. Finger picking, and then later on back into the. And how do we do that on beat? That's a challenge. I wasn't able to do this right off the bat, and it really kind of pissed me off a bit. So I made some exercises so I could practice and get it up to that. Because I've been uh, stowing the pick between my second and third fingers since I was 15, and I saw some guy on rock school. He was the uh, guitarist for um, Sly and the Family Stone. And he did that. It was uh, it was awesome. But uh, doing it on beat is something that you're not often called upon to do. Mayer takes the pick and he puts it between his first two fingers and it's actually faster to get it in there than the way I do it. But you can take your pick. Take your pick! <laughs> so, let's look at measure 12. How do we get out of this? We do this. That's what we do. So we pick the notes. on an upstroke on that A4, I slide the pinky up and as I'm doing that I'm stowing the pick between the second and third fingers. I do that because it leaves my thumb and first finger to do most of the picking. Mayer does the first and second and he's able to finger pick with that pick in there but I find it gets in the way. And then we do a slap on the open A and then sound the open A. You can just practice that. And then we do this uh, thing in measure 13, it sounds like this, I'll play it slow. Like that. So it's a series of double stops. And then between that we have this alternating open A. thing is down here right here as we do the slide from the B4 to the B2 by the time we get to that we're actually going to pluck the A at the same time like that and we end off with a slap again and the open A the double stops are at the uh, ninth fret we have the E9 and the B10 I use my first finger and my second finger. Then we slide down to the seventh position. First finger is on the E7, third finger is on the B9. Then we take it all the way down to the second position. First finger is on E2, third finger is on B4. And we actually do a pull off. So we take that first finger on the E2, pull off to the open E, and then, and then we're throwing in those alternating low A's. Mm -hmm. 
Measure 14 is similar at the beginning. This is measure 14. Um, one of the differences, you don't have that note sounding at the same time as this slide down. Let's do measure 14 slow again. Ending off the open A. So the only big difference between measure 13 and 14 is the way they end off. And that slide up from B to into the open A is kind of pronounced. Let's play them at the same time. to 15 and 16. So we've slid our thumb up now. We're doing a broom handle grip bass note on the E9 and the chords, first two, are incorporated here as well, same ones. So we have a busy bass line. We hit the bass note three times. One, two, three. First time with the first chord all together and then one time by itself as we're transitioning to the second chord and then the third time with that chord in accordance with a pull-off from the high E to the open E. that. That pull off is hard to achieve. Sometimes you gotta roll. I roll right off the fingerboard, angle off, just to make sure I get it. I just didn't get it there. And then we're gonna be alternating between the high E and the fretted B9. Ending with two notes on the bass line before we start it all, all over again. So let's do measures 13 to 16 and see how they sound. I was trying to keep them there. And we start over again. Exactly the same. So how are we going to transition out of that? We kind of ring that open high E string. And back into the verse, chorus. So what's a good way to practice the pick swapping so we do it on beat? I practice the ending of the verse and the beginning of the pre-chorus over again, over and over again, slow first, and uh, I did it as fast as I could execute it cleanly, and slowly sped it up, you could try it with a metronome, so that's one thing, getting into it, getting out of it. Thing. Practice the practice the ending part until you've got it so that you can do it all on beat. So just make these neat little exercises for yourself and you'll be able to uh, get it up to speed eventually. The speed of the tune starts off at 72 beats per minute in this live recording and when he gets to this part he's at 78. He naturally speeds up during the pre-chorus and after he speeds up in the pre-chorus the verse is pretty much at 78 instead of 72. So he gets excited in the pre-chorus, and then you have to pay for it and do the rest of the song in a new tempo. So that's pretty much all the parts you need to play the song. Um, he ends it off with this. You gotta be careful muting there because I just I heard a bad there was a yucky chord in there like that so we just do the uh, E arpeggio twice low E and then we strum that chord 
and we're muting the D string, we're muting the B and the high E, and we're just sounding the notes of the chord as a strum. And that's the ending. So one other little value-added thing that uh, I thought of when I was transcribing this song was there's a piano bit in the middle with a melody like this. And that's when he's playing this. It's kind of neat. Uh, sometimes he whistles in, in other covers of this. I'm not a whistler. The piano plays it. It sounds beautiful. But we can actually incorporate this melody over the same time we play this. And we do that by slightly arranging our, rearranging our chording here to get some of the notes that we're going to have. And we're going to do the, um, oh, what do you call this? Claw picking, hybrid picking. We have our pick and we have our fingers that we can pluck notes at the same time. We're going to go for this. So that's just taking and the piano melody and playing them at the same time. When you transcribe this, you line them up on top of each other and you get this. Let's just look at that. So what we're doing is, I've got my pinky on the B4, third finger on the D4, first finger on the G1, and I'm ready to do that arpeggio. But at the same time, right off the top, I'm going to take my third finger and my pick. The pick is going to pluck the open A. First, the third finger is going to, on the, fret, on the picking hand, is going to pluck the high E at the same time. So two notes plucking at the same time, one with pick, one with finger, and then we're going to continue the arpeggio. Then we're going to do another two-noter. This time our second finger is going to pick the fretted B. Same time we start the arpeggio over again, so we're plucking an A at the same time. So we have this. And you can practice just in little tidbits like this. Just like that. So you're comfortable, and every time you get a bit more comfortable with it, go a bit more. So again, the third finger is going to hit the additional high E note. Second finger is going to pluck the fretted B4 here. Now we're going to lift off the B string and hit it open. So it's just like that. We continue the arpeggio. Like that so that gets us the piano lick sorry that comes after and the measure after that we add another note to the piano melody so it's we're gonna take our second finger put it on the E2 and we're gonna pluck the D4 and the E2 at the same time continue the arpeggio slow that part sounds like this it's a weird timing because that F sharp note happens uh, when we're about to pluck the D4 so it's kind of weird and then we do the same melody but this time with the E as the root and because he's not singing during that, it's actually the double pump version of the uh, e, 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 e. So to incorporate the melody there, we do the same kind of alteration. We have our pinky on the B4, third finger on the A4 this time, and we do this. So that's a bit weird because we're not doing the arpeggio like we did before, we're doing the double pumping on the low E. the last bit of it. So it 
shows you how you can incorporate that nice piano melody over the and the it's not something, that isn't something that Mayer does, he's not known for that, but as a fingerstyle guitarist, I kind of saw that all the notes were very handy and easily grabbed. And even the last uh, melody, which is... Like that, you could do the same thing. So I've included that in the tab, although that 7th fret of the high E is a stretch, so you can just use the open. So there's a couple of options for you if you want to take this and, and go somewhere else with it. Hope you enjoyed it. This was a very requested song over the years. I'm finally glad to get to it.